Welcome to the Enterprise TV program. I'm your host, Femi Oshonuga. Thank you for taking time out to join us on this program today. Last week, uh, we ended on how to find your home placement in life so that you can occupy or do business till Jesus Christ comes again. Today, I'll be sharing on um, life investment. Life investment. Um, investment is an integral part of any organization. But when you now have the word life investment or investor, then it begins to um, give you another picture entirely. What do we mean by life investment and life investors? Uh, I wanted to take time out to listen to what the people on the street understand by this um, topic. Then I'll come back to share more on it by the help of the Holy Spirit. Stay tuned. Life investment can be referred to as it, it depends on the content for which you are taking it. If you are saying this is a life investment, you can be talking about something that you invest on that will outlive you. Like one investing in real estate, investing in any other business that at least will outlive you after you must have finished your race on her. The life investment it means your own vision, what God has shown you to invest in life. Maybe your own personal vision that you have that you have God God has shown you maybe through dreams, through revelation that this is what I want you to invest in life. What you are talking about life investment, you are talking about um doing something that we what do you say give you satisfaction financially, emotionally, and even spiritually. Well, so at the end of your life, when you look at what you've done, the, what you, let me say, put your effort in throughout your lifetime, you can look back and be satisfied. So life investment in summary is something in which you have put all your effort, all your resources to make you comfortable at the end of your days. Maybe at that time when you no longer can work or do anything, so that that's what to keep you going. Wow, great answer, sir. What is life investment, and who is a life investor? Uh, some of the uh, respondents uh, gave practical answers that I'll be talking more during the course of the of this program today. Uh, but let me read from. Luke chapter 13 verses 6 to 9 before we take off. Luke 13 verses 6 to 9 it says, And he told them this parable, A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it, but did not find any. I'm reading from Amplified Version. So he said to the vine dresser, See here, for these three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it continue also to use up the ground, to deplete the soil, intercept the sun, and take up room? But it replied to him, Leave it alone, sir. Just this one more year, till I dig around it, around it and put manure on the soil. Verse 9, it says, Then perhaps it will bear fruit after this. But if not, you can cut it down and cut it out cut it down and cut it out. Jesus spoke to them a parable trying to interpret the kingdom of God by the natural things you and I can see, relate with and understand. And he said this tree, it has been taking space for the past three years and it's not producing. I want to cut it down. God looks for profit. And everything that we do here on earth uh, uh, like we shared on the first episode of uh, the enterprise, you must have an understanding that you need to have a mindset of profitability. Uh, today, I'll be sharing on life investors. Life investors. The word investment simply means to invest. Uh, put money in something that will bring in profit or grow. 
As a businessman and as a businesswoman, you must be thinking on investment. You must be thinking of how to grow your investment also. Look for areas where you can invest into as a business person. Also look at how you can grow your investment. But when we say life investors, I'm actually talking about people who are investing in things that are monumental, things that, that, um, that are larger than the perception of human beings, the average human beings, uh, things that we have lost you here on earth, uh, but much more things that will go beyond our existence here on this physical earth. Uh, and the number one thing I want you to understand is this. Every investment brings profit. Every investment seeks to bring profit. But as a life investor, you are looking beyond the profitability to looking at how these things affect life. How it affects the lives of people. And how it also affects something beyond the natural life, how it affects God. God is a being. He is a spirit. Is what says that those who serve him must serve him in spirit and in truth. Why? Because he is a spirit. In John chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. What am I saying? What I'm saying is this. You must have a, an understanding that um, investment as a believer who is into business is in two directions. You have spiritual investment. You also have natural investment. Because I said it last week that many of us who are in business as believers, we are trying to use Egyptian principles to get heaven's results. You want to use the uh, principles of the word out there to produce God's backed result. And it won't happen because God will not share his glory with man. He says, the reason why the prayers about that business is not working out is because you are using contrary principles to get God's backing and get God's kind of result. It won't happen. God will not back what he has not stamped or approved. So, you must understand as a believer who is into business, your Priority moves beyond natural investment, first and foremost, into spiritual investment. Spiritual investment in what area? You see, um, I'm going to read Matthew chapter 16 to us. Matthew 16 verse, from verse 24. Uh, the first spiritual investment is this. Um, submitting, surrendering your life to God as a seed to use the way it wants to in that business that you are involved in. You must be dead to fleshly desires that will not glorify God in that business. And then begin to walk in the will of God, the counsel of God in totality for that business. So, you are seeking to glorify God with your life in that business, in that enterprise. And Matthew 16, 24, it says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life or will invest his life for my sake, that is for my own purpose in that business, if you will give your life for me, he says that what? You will find it. 26 says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul? You see, many of us, we go after investments in business at the peril of our soul, of our relationship with God, at the peril of your work with God. Things that, you know, God has not backed or approved. And you begin to wonder why the business is not moving, why the business is not advancing. First and foremost, let your investment be spiritual. Give your life to God. Surrender your life in totality to Him, even in that business. I was talking with someone, a person said, you see, uh, I take business out of my relationship with God. My relationship with God is something else, then my business um, work is something else. No, it shouldn't be. The same should come together, whereby you represent God in the marketplace, whereby you represent God on that business. God wants apostles in the marketplace, people that will represent him in the business front. I'll be back to share more on this after this time out. Stay with me.
All right, thank you for staying tuned to the program. Uh, I mentioned earlier on that life investors are investors that look beyond the now, they look beyond the, in, the, the immediate environment, and they look beyond the mindset of the average man on the street into projecting into the immediate future and then eternity. So spiritual investment, like I was trying to say the other time, communicates more beyond the natural. You seek to fulfill the will of God by surrendering your own life to God first and foremost. Then secondly, you need to also look into the area of your business, uh, expanding the kingdom of God here on earth. Your business should not just be to bring profit unto you and to your uh, families alone, but it should be that you are aiming with that business to expand God's kingdom, to further the kingdom of God here on earth, and to bring profit unto Him. That should also be your mindset. So, is your business uh, being engaged one way or the other in expanding God's business, expanding God's own kingdom? Remember Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom of God. That is not limited to uh, your life outside of your business. It also involves uh, your life within your business entity. How is your business contributing to the expansion of God's kingdom on earth? Uh, you need to also understand that your business must also have an input of God into it. You see, uh, if you want to grow that business, you also must spiritually grow. The limit of the growth of your, of your business is uh, linked up to the limit of the growth of the people involved. If the people within that business environment, if they are not growing, the business will not grow. So if you want your business to experience spiritual growth and spiritual investment, you also must grow spiritually by spiritually investing in yourself. Excuse me, how many times do you take in, uh, 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 to seek the face of the Lord or you think you should fly to Dubai, fly to London, fly to Jamaica and then God comes last? Oh, you are born again, you have surrendered your life to God, your soul has been given to God as a seed, as an investment, a seed that brings in eternal profit because you, 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 are, going to, you are going to be there with the Lord through all of eternity. But it's your whole spiritual life experiencing growth. You need to invest, take time out to invest spiritually into your life. Because some things will be given unto you by God. If you can invest in your prayer life, invest in your word study life, you begin to see that God may communicate certain things unto you. Revelations, inspirations, ideas, divine innovations. The kind of things you will not get by going to an MBA school, I mean getting an MBA from a business school uh, or going to go and enroll in one business university or business environment or the other. Things that God will download from heaven unto you. So you must also grow spiritually to actually take your business to the next level spiritually. So spiritual investment matters a lot. As a business person, as a businesswoman, as a businessman there, what are you contributing within yourself to grow yourself spiritually? It will eventually impact on your business at the end of the day. Uh, I will be sharing more on the other part of investment, which is what most businessmen look into, natural investment. But like I said, as a believer, your concept and your mindset needs to differ from that of the average worldly businessman, businesswoman on the street out there, whom you are also competing with. I will share more on natural investment by the grace of God next week. Stay tuned. I will be coming back to answer a few questions that have come in from some of our viewers. Thank you for stay, staying tuned. 
Uh, last week I started um, to answer a, uh, a question that was sent in. It says, um, how do I start a uh, business, my own business, with little or no money? I said, you need to understand that um, you must settle certain things before we come to the aspect of answering this question. I talked about finding out certain things on the field uh, that uh, relate to that business, feasibility studies. We'll talk more about feasibility studies in the course of this program. Uh, you then pile up your information or feedback to form a beam for that business, basic initial needs for that business. At the end of the day, from that basic initial needs, you will have been able to ratify that this is the total amount of money I need to start off this business. <laughs> Many think they need money to start their businesses, but after going through all I've mentioned, you may eventually find out that you don't even need money to start that business. Possibly what you need is for you to share your ideas or take your idea to the marketplace and find partners people that will partner with you or eventually uh, it may communicate to you in a different format entirely totally different from having money to start that business but if at the end of the day your own need is 